uh, friends DJing at this place on Water Incorporated. So this is what we're up against, people. Vitamin water 10. 10 calories per serving, packed with vitamins, and apparently everybody's loving the taste. What are you guys hearing out there? What? I dress up in ladies' underwear and make balloon animals. I never said that. <sighs> you on a personal call, Rick? 10 calories per serving, naturally sweetened, great taste. New Vitamin Water 10, it's one up to nature. Hi, I'm Pamela. Hi, I'm Avon. And I'm Kate. And welcome back to the District Dish. We're dishing to you today at Sweet Green, which is at 1512 Connecticut Avenue in Northwest DC near DuPont Circle. And today our guest is John Michael Scott, who claims he is a dating expert or <laughs> coach. This poor guy. Yeah, yeah, not coach. And what qualifies you? I'm going to stick with whatever. coach, definitely. Okay, a professional, <laughs> professional dater. I don't know about professional dater, but definitely a coach. I try okay. to work with other people in their dating. Okay, yeah, well, tell but. us about that. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, the thing is, uh, about a, maybe even 10 years ago at this point, um, I was looking around, I was talking to a lot of my uh, female friends in particular, I heard a lot of complaints, a lot of complaints about dating in D.C. Really? <laughs> and Let I can't imagine. You. Have you ever had a complaint? <laughs> uh, I give Once, a lot of twice? complaints. No? I, yeah. I, I think me, from I time to time. Numerous. Yeah. I've got a lot of complaints. My, my go nickname ahead. in college was One Date Kate. I, I One Date had, Kate? Yeah. Wow, that's, Wait, so, that's awesome. So tell us how men cannot be... <laughs> not be one dated on oh one my date. goodness you know just to begin with like you know just a little authenticity would be nice mm -hmm. I, I, honestly I'd say that about both sexes I mean like a little bit of authenticity goes a long way just trying to recognize that there's another person sitting in front of you and it's not you know this could be like somebody's mom somebody's sister it could be yours you know you, how would so you this feel is what you're telling this is what you're telling the guys the guys, the guys and some of the girls but definitely the guys okay but wait, let's, let's back up so w 10 years ago, you were getting a lot of complaints from Yeah, from so I was listening to a lot of my female friends and, you know, there was a huge frustration over dating in their 20s, dating in their 30s, and trying to figure out how to, you know, meet people who are decent, who are authentic, who are honest, who were, you know, who told them what they felt. That was a big one. Telling them what they felt and actually, you know, having an a open dialogue, an open conversation. Sounds like a movie. Is very right? important. Sounds like a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See that movie? There was I, a whole movie about this. I actually have. have the book. I'm, I'm the, the, he's just not that into you. I'm reading the book right now, and oh. I'm, the, I'm like the last person on the face of the planet to, to read Maybe. this book. But it is you might be absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. I'm not it. I think it's going to change my life. Well, it's definitely, you know, there's definitely a lot of people who probably should read the book because, I mean, the other, the other problem we have, besides like, a lack of authenticity, um, there's a problem with people thinking that everybody should love them. And that just doesn't happen. No. I mean, practical no. reality is that there are some people who are going to be like really into you, and there are some people who are just, for whatever reason, you're not their cup of tea. Not, and that's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. But it's not you that know. just way, that way in dating, it's mm -mm. that way in life. Right? Absolutely. You exactly. might have co workers that you feel right. that way about, or that's why you are okay not friends with, with some it. people. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in work, I mean, we're just like, oh, you know, I just don't get along with them. But so in, in, dating, in dating, we have more of a problem with rejection. Yeah, yeah, huge, huge problems with rejection. So you decided to start your own business. <laughs> you call me out on that, are you? Yes, I, I really am fascinated by this this coaching of men in dating. So and, yeah, like, and how successful has it been? Oh my goodness! So you know, a uh, friend and I, um, I spent some time trying to find the right partner for this. I really felt that you needed to have both sides of the of the dialogue. You had to have the female perspective and the male perspective and to be able to deliver that. So I looked for a long time to find somebody who was you know, a little bit entrepreneurial, who wanted to help some people, and who was female. Uh, I did come across somebody, and we actually did put together a business in 2006. And we worked on um, seriously for about two and a half years, and to be honest, um, we came to a point where we realized we needed a lot more people. We needed a lot more coaches to be working with us in order for the business to thrive. So you had a lot of men and women that were having trouble with dating and you needed more coaches to tell them how to date properly? Yeah, and there was a lot of topics to cover. I mean, you know, you guys experience a lot in the social scene with, uh, you know, people's etiquette and things like that. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different layers to that topic that you almost have to like rip it apart, tear it down and make it as simple as possible. It has to be like the idiot's guide. It mm -hmm. really does. Um, because people haven't been, you know, brought up with uh, a really great etiquette these days. Right? You're kind of like the Mr. Miss A. Kind of. <laughs> I've talked to Andrea a little bit. I have talked, we had a long co conversation about mm -hmm. this topic a what? few weeks ago. 
What if, what's the biggest complaint that people come in with? Or what do you need to help people with the most? So you, you talked about etiquette. Opening is that a conversation. Just so starting a conversation. It's amazing. Not even getting to the small talk. Just how do I, how do I open a dialogue in the first place? Guys are like, well, you know, if I see this person on the street, how am I gonna, how am I gonna talk to them? You know, hey, so well, that's, how do you talk to them? Yeah. yeah, how do you talk to them when, when you're walking down the street and you see Pamela and you're like, I have to talk to this. I woman. run, um, <laughs> but uh, no, but seriously, I agree with you. I think the, one of the biggest things in, in life is rejection, and mm -hmm. so that actually the fear actually predicates anything else that's out there. So as much yeah, as yeah, so how do you open a conversation when you're afraid of being rejected? Is that why I don't care as a woman? About rejection. No, seriously, I don't care about rejection. You can't worry about it. I really don't. But I, really I will don't. say that as a woman, when you're walking down the street in D.C., you cannot smile. Because if you smile or you make eye contact <laughs> with anyone, whether you're just trying to be nice or not, mm -hmm. you've opened up a can of worms that you never intended to open. Right. So funny. you have to it's be true. a grouchy woman in this city <laughs> in order to move through your day because otherwise you get harassed. Yeah, yeah Washington DC is kind of unique like that. I mean, you know, I have friends from the South and they're used to being smiling happy, happy, smiling, saying, how are you, how's mm -hmm. your day? And that kind of stuff just doesn't work in right. DC. You do that and there's like a flock of guys around you. I agree. Okay, so agree. You, you make the, the, the initial contact, you the, the person then then what's the next step that you've you've coached these guys to do? Ask them out? <laughs> Hopefully try and establish any kind of a conversation. I mean, there's a lot to talk about in the world at any given moment. I mean, you can just ask somebody a question. I agree. You know, you walk in on the street, you're, you're trying to find sweet greens. I mean, like, you know, you could ask anybody walking across DuPont Circle just now, I could have seen somebody and just uh, not knowing where sweet greens is in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, well, when does it example. become kind of like the creepy stalker thing? Yeah, know? how do you know whenever? Well, they whenever? keep following you. That's yeah, not okay. and then you're like, okay, I told you where sweet green is, go. Face yeah, so how do you handle, so how do you handle rejection and know when to move on to the next person? So right. the biggest, you know, the next biggest thing I have to talk to people about is just like trying to pay attention to body language a little bit. I mean, the truth is that everybody gives off body language all the time, and you can definitely tell when somebody's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. If I they're think not so. comffortable, oh, let yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. Just let go. It's all right. There's another person and down, you know, right, a block exactly. further. There's Who tons cares? of people Literally. out there. And that's <laughs> both men and women. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Pay attention to body language. That's a huge one. So as a guy dating in the city, what is your biggest problem with DC women? <laughs> you know, I don't necessarily have a problem with DC women, but one of the things that I do know is that it is a little bit harder to date here because there's, a, there's definitely a small town aspect to Washington DC. It's like a big little city. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not Are a big, big city. Your friends have already met the girl. Is that what you're saying? It could be, the, could be my friends. Bet. It could have been that like somebody I dated like last year is uh, the I best friend you. of somebody I've just met, and I don't know it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that kind of thing happens a whole lot. That's okay. why we it's have, important to end problem. relationships well. That's yeah. right. Because yeah, if you ended it big poorly, deal here. and then you have a problem. Yeah, this is a small town. Yeah, to be polite to everybody, well. no matter what. Okay. That's a big thing for Washington D.C. alone, in that's particular. Right. And then so, find out who they know by Facebook. <laughs> right. right, exactly. That's true. That's true. So that's so your biggest tip for all the the gentlemen viewers out there. What would you, your big tip be? You know, pay attention to the other person and treat everybody like they could be your sister, your mom, your your niece, your nephew. Because at the end of the day, you don't know when you're going to see them again. D.C. is like that, so it's that's a very true. important thing to remember. That's true. You want to treat him well, but you need to add a little excitement to the relationship, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want to treat him like your sister, too. Oh, no. That's true. So that's don't true. treat him nice. Be <laughs> real mean to him. Listen to this guy, right? You're the dating expert. <laughs> Today. Well, thank you so much, John Michael, for joining us. Oh, We've thank you certainly learned a lot. And Thanks I hope you have, too. Be sure to join us next Wednesday right here on The District Dish.